Hey, welcome back to Hot Tip Tuesday. My name is Matt, and in this video, I am going to talk about belts and just give you some things to think about, places to go to purchase and explore belt options specific to the WorkSharp Elite Sharpening System, sometimes called the uh, WorkSharp with blade, the Ken Onion with blade grinding attachment. Um, we'll go to the bench here in just a minute. Before I do, I just want to mention a couple things about the Guild of Professional Sharpeners, which is at guildofsharpeners.org. Uh, I'm going to be giving away one of these elite sharpening systems to uh, somebody uh, at the end of the month. This is April 2022 that I'm recording this, and at the end of the month, I'm going to draw from the names of the people who joined the Guild this month, and I'll be sending them one of these sharpeners. So to enter that giveaway, uh, become a member of the guild. And I want to welcome Scott and William to the guild this week. Uh, one coming brand new to sharpening and one coming with uh, set up over 40 years of experience in sharpening. So the guild has a wide variety of, um, of expertise available and um, it is specific for both teaching the art and skill of sharpening and then also turning that skill into a business and generating some, some money from it. Um, so that's, uh, that's something you should check out if uh, any of that sounds interesting to you. That is at guildofsharpeners.org. This week also, I uh, finally filed my taxes and uh, <clears throat> I just, I get excited about the, like the opportunities that having a business bring to you from the tax front. Uh, if you're a typical W-2 employee, nine to five, work a job, there's really not much you can do to reduce your tax burden. Um, but when you venture into other places like business, then uh, some opportunities present themselves for you to write off business expenses. Uh, and just real quick here, this is just a, a quick lesson um, in case you are not, are not aware of this. When you're a W-2 employee, you, you make money you pay tax and you live on what's left. Uh, the way it works for businesses is they, they make money, they buy the things they need to operate their business, they pay tax on what's left. Think about that a little bit. Uh, if this is a new idea to you, the, the profundity of it might not totally hit home, but it's a huge, huge difference there. Uh, just imagine if you kept all of the money that you earned from your job and only paid tax on the amount you didn't spend to live your life. Uh, it's not exactly like that because you do have to justify your expenses to operate a business. But to uh, just give you the, uh, in case you're not aware of how that works, it's, uh, it's a big deal. So uh, having a business is very helpful. And uh, in filing my taxes this year with my wife, it... Uh, became evident once again. Okay, so without further ado, let's go take a look at the WorkSharp blade grinding attachment and discuss belts. Okay, so if you've been with me any length of time, you've seen this sort of layout here. This is the tool we're talking about. This is the WorkSharp. <clears throat> uh, man, I'm even getting it mixed up. I think the whole thing is like the WorkSharp Ken Onion and then, or no, this is the Ken Onion uh, blade grinding attachment. So the WorkSharp Ken Onion. Elite sharpening system. This thing's pretty sweet. Check out some other videos I've done on these. Uh, but what we're talking about specifically is the belts and some options for these. Um, first off, I, I've, I've, uh, I use the, I have used the offerings from WorkSharp. And I will say I, have, I don't have any problems with these. There's one exception which I'll get to. Um, the, uh, these, it, appears to me that WorkSharp has partnered with Norton and Norton is the supplier of the belts for WorkSharp. I never, I never had much of an issue with those. I think they're good belts. If you're running those I, and you're happy with them, like that's awesome. You're good to go. Uh, one thing that has always kind of bothered me is that they're, I've just built the, like the grit, um, you know, like a 120 or 600 grit, like that's what makes sense to me. And I've found that as we venture into these things, like we have an X4, X65, and like the, the sequence doesn't make any sense to me really. So what, what we have done is um, we have a grit chart that's available uh, in the guild that 
helps provide some clarity. At least it's a reference when, uh, when you don't know or when you can't remember what, what each one is. Okay, so and WorkSharp has a whole spread. You go on their website and they got a whole spread of belts and, and grits and they actually do it. They've, they've done a nice job of uh, laying out exactly what the grit is and the, the code for the belt. So and they give you the whole thing and they make it, they've done a nice job with that. Um, but as, uh, as you also know, I'm a Cubitron guy and I don't think that WorkSharp sells Cubitrons. I get my Cubitrons from Cliff Curry, as you probably know. Um, and I don't, I don't use these for tough, for the low grit work, but the option is out there. This is a 120 grit Cubitron and I think you can get 80 as well. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that those exist. If you are using just this machine for your whole sequence, start to finish, you might be happy if you get some of these 120 Cubitrons. Um, after that, the sequence is sort of the same. I've evolved into using Trizax. Again, because I get my belts from Cliff, uh, it's just, um, I'm not, I, I've been really happy with the Trizax. I didn't go to Trizax because I had a problem with anything else. I went because it was convenient to the place where I was buying belts. Um, so, but, uh, and then you can get the, these are sequent, this is an A16 and it's a, 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 comparably a 1200 grit belt. So you can get a whole sequence of Trizac belts as well. Uh, I will say that um, WorkSharp also does have some coarse grit offerings. They also have a firm backing option, which I don't have any of, I haven't tried, but it is so that uh, when you're sharpening here, this, this deflects when you push on it. Uh, if you get a firmer backing, it acts more as a flat grind. The other thing you can do, which you may be aware of, is you can move this wheel uh, up even closer to this wheel so that there's less space between them, so there is less slack belt action. Uh, it's never been anything that I've been compelled to do, but you should know it's an option. Um, I'm just thinking that, so now we've got, we've spoken about the course options. We've talked about the Norton uh, selection offered by WorkSharp, which are good. We've talked about Trizax, which are also good. I didn't mention specifically that these are one by 18 belts. And the way that works is this is one inch wide here. And if you snipped the belt and laid it out flat, it would be 18 inches long. So that's how these are measured one by 18, and if you go to any major belt supplier, you can purchase one by 18 belts. Um, just please know, like, not, not all belts are equal, right? Like, and I, I hopefully we've, we've uh, addressed that enough on my channel, how like aluminum oxide belts and silica carbide and Cubitron ceramics, like they're not all the same. They're so, um, um, okay, so that's good on coarse belts. You can also just get the kit from, um, from WorkSharp, uh, and that will include a cloth belt. So we'll talk about uh, over on this side, my finishing belt. I'm using leather right now with Tormac paste. I started out using the cloth belts offered by WorkSharp, and I liked these. Uh, they also, forgive me if I don't have it in front of me, they'll sell it with the compound, either a green or a red compound. And I was, I really liked the results I was getting from those. So if you're using those, um, uh, or at least consider using them. <clears throat> One issue I had going back in time now is that these belts, the cloth belts were, were uh, popping, meaning like the seam. So this is a, there's a seam here. Uh, the seam was letting go. So after I bought a new pack and they all let go, I decided that I wasn't going to keep buying them. That might have been just a production run thing, and I haven't heard much about it lately, so I don't know if that's been addressed. But that's the reason why I largely went over to doing a leather belt. I'm getting good results here, um, but cloth belts work well too. Okay, my last thing is just going to be on leather. There's the smooth side and the rough side. Um, you can do... Um, you can do both either. You can do, there's a lot of options here, right? So, uh, just understand that. And I like, not all leather belts are the same either. Some of them I've had really, uh, be really bouncy. Some of them run smooth. 
Uh, I don't know how to really test that out without buying some and uh, seeing which ones work well for you. I use uh, this uh, leather honey uh, to, to make my belts a little more supple. Uh, so I wash them. This one's not washed, but wash them. And then I only apply oil to the uh, exterior side that I'm going to be applying a compound to. I found that when I applied oil on the inside, it would not grip as well on the drive wheel. Oh, dude, belts. Lots about belts. Um, all right, so I hope that is the hot tip there, really, is like, here's, an, here's a bunch of belts. Like, have some fun exploring, trying different belts, different uh, abrasives, different backings, different speeds, different everything. Just have fun exploring it and go forth with an open mind, and I hope that that has provided some assistance uh, or at least clarity around this topic. Again, I will be giving one of these away to some lucky member who joins the guild this month of April 2022. Uh, so please consider becoming a member. And thank you so much. I'll see you on the next Hot Tip Tuesday.